What's up, everybody? Justin Hayes here from superhumanpursuits.com. Section four, video four of the Crash Course in Functional Training, or what I like to think of as just the guide to proper training and taking good care of yourself. I've already went over the big trunk line here, breathing, movement, strength, and skill. I expanded upon breathing and briefly overviewed movement. And now what I wanna do is dive a little bit deeper into mobility. In the previous video, I defined mobility as the ability to produce a range of motion at a given joint. Now, here's where the confusion lies. Everyone's using the term mobility and we maybe get it mixed up with flexibility. In essence, there these arguments can go different ways. Some people believe they are two separate things entirely. I'm lumping them all together for simplicity purposes. So I think of flexibility as an underlying factor to mobility, and we'll leave it at that. I lump mobility into two broad categories here, self and hands-on. Self being techniques you can do with your own two hands or maybe with an outside tool to yourself. And hands-on is just a passive care done by someone else, the hands of someone else, or tools in the hands of someone else. And although I am of the belief that the majority of your mobility needs can be met with self-care, I do think that a professional using their actual hands to mobilize you can be a dramatic advantage to someone who has problems with mobility. Working our way into the self-care bubble here, I've got stretching and myofascial or self-myofascial release written down here. Am I saying these are the only ways you can mobilize? No, there's obviously hundreds of ways to tackle this. These are just the two common broad categories that uh, I want to make you aware of. Stretching is what you would think it is. Now, the two bubbles I have listed under that, active isolated stretching and PNF, which stands for passive neuromuscular facilitation. These are two things you can dive deeper into if you choose, but they are common reoccurring stretching techniques that I see in high-level strength and conditioning programs. So am I saying they're the end-all, be-all? No, but I do see them over and over and again, and so I think they are probably ideal and best practices when dealing with stretching. You still do see static stretching and 30-second hold type stuff, but these techniques are moving more and more to the forefront. If we look at myofascial release or self-myofascial release, I define this in some blog posts. It's kind of a complicated topic, but the basic idea is that you're using some sort of tool to apply pressure to tissues in your body and release tension within a muscle or joint. And the common things, common tools we'll see in this realm are foam rollers, ball works like lacrosse balls or softballs, tennis balls, and stick work. So these three tools, and there are several others obviously, combine to help achieve self-myofascial release. Under the hands-on section, I've written four things here. I got four bubbles, Graston, ART, which stands for active release technique, and massage and the chiropractic adjustment all are passive care things, meaning they require the hands and tools of another. I don't want to dive deep into any of these categories in particular. Graston is not as common anymore. Active release technique is fairly popular. Massage, when I talk about massage, I'm not talking about a hot rock or a foo-foo massage. I'm talking about deep tissue work. This is what brings a mobilization change, not a you know a foo-foo relaxing massage. And the chiropractic adjustment, which most of us are familiar with, is a mobility tool. So that's it for mobility. I hope that has cleared some things up a little bit. If you guys have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me, Justin, at superhumanpursuits.com. I will talk to you in the next video.